So hi everyone, I'm Lu Fan from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And today I'm going to share the work of modeling user behavior with graph convolution for personalized product search. This is a work collaborate with PolyU Shopping Lab and Professor Zhang from Dalian University of Technology and Alibaba Group. Mm, my presentation will be consist of four parts and we'll start from background motivation and insight. So product search is a task that given a query submitted by user and we will, the system is expected to return a order list, an order list of products. Uh, it is an essential module in online shopping platforms such as Taobao or Amazon. It will guide users to browse and purchase products from a huge collections of commodities. Uh, and product search has its unique characteristics. First of all, uh, most of the textual informations, textual content are short and ambiguous, such as queries or titles. So that would make the content-based methods not informative enough, and we cannot uh, obtain uh, good or qualified uh, product representations. This drives us to utilize rich, implicit interactions informations in the platforms, which is another important uh, information source uh, in the problems of product search. Uh, one of the most popular interactions we use is the user behaviors. And one of the most common way to represent users is to use their, uh, is to compose the user with the products they have visited. Uh, some works use uh, long-term historical behaviors and some others would use short-term behavior sequence. Both of them, however, have problems. Long-term uh, historical user behaviors uh, can form a comprehensive user representation. However, uh, they normally contain noisy preference signals. On the other hand, methods using short-term behaviors helps to eliminate noisy preference signals, but they may contain insufficient preference signals. Not to mention that in practice, we some many sequences would be uh, truncated for computational efficiency. So in our work, we decided to form a user successive behavior graph that, uh, as we can see, that we uh, connect each sequence with uh, products they contain. So in such way, we can explore both local and global user behavior patterns on a user uh, successive behavior graph. It's like, take a look at the global information when we don't have inadequate hints at hand. So in our understanding, SBG, uh, namely uh, for successive behavior graph, actually addresses the aforementioned problems in the following two aspects. First, uh, short-term be user behaviors usually contains inadequate user inf uh, information to reflect the user pr preference. But SBG would connect the relevant products linked up by the global user sequences. For example, like uh, given user two here, if she try to search for bag, we have no ideas whether to push a handbags or a backpacks to him, uh, to her. But uh, with the hint that uh, this luxury handbags is occurred with the heels he she has all she has recently visited, we can we can make the guess that she is more likely to want to buy a luxury handbag instead of this backpack. And second, since we leverage graph convolutions to exploit the connectivity patterns in SVG, it can capture such structural information and it will, be, uh, it will be reflected in the product embeddings. So it can make the uh, closer products on SVG more have the similar uh, embeddings in the latent space. And now we end up with our intuition and uh, insight. We will move to the approach section that we adopt a typical latent space based general, general generative framework for product search. And it usually learns all the embeddings uh, with two tasks. 
The first task is uh, a product retrieval task for the retrieval model. And another one is a language modeling task for better semantic matching. In the retrieval task, the most relevant products are retrieved by matching products embedding with the current context, which is usually a mix of query and the user's preference. While a language modeling task aims to learn the embeddings of queries and products of words by modeling and test information. Here, we take the popular model paragraph vectors, uh, PV, uh, as our example, because the terms in the queries or title somehow, uh, the orders of these terms are not uh, matter greatly. And PV assumes that the words of token words and tokens can be generated from the entities. In our context, it actually infers to uh, products. And finally, we maximize the likelihood for both to task and obtain our final objective. Also, negative sampling are employed to compare the uh, log likelihood for computational efficiency. Our overall framework is as shown in the figure uh, that we have Mm, three stage. First, we would like to construct a successive behavior graph from the observed user behavior sequences. Then we employ an efficient graph convolution with jumping connections to enrich the product representations. The enriched product vectors can subsequently be used to the next stage, the our original or ordinary uh, product search models that based on latent space vectors. So as we can see, our model is a modification based on uh, the Latin space-based product search framework that we uh, improve it uh, with the relations on successive behavior graph by using graph convolution. Next, we will have, uh, we'll introduce in details for each stage. First, let's go, uh, let's start from graph construction. That our successive behavior graph is constructed by utilizing short-term behaviors of all the users. In such way, uh, we have three steps here. First, we will sort all the observed purchased records in a chronological order for each user. And second, we may split the sequences with a time interval R. And finally, we construct the better type graph by linking up sequences with their corresponding products. In such way, we can actually extract global behavior patterns in different time granularities. And with our successive behavior graph, we then employ the graph convolution to explore these informations. We have made some modifications of vanilla JSON to better adapt it to, the, to our problems and name this module as uh, an efficient jumping graph convolution. So first, the layer of the vanilla JSON performs feature propagation and transformations with connecting nodes in the graph. However, as observed from our empirical studies, that the projection layers we uh, may distort the semantic product representations learned by language modeling in methods such as them or ham. So to avoid such distortion of semantic representations, we remove the projection layer and the activation layers of the vanilla uh, GCN. So this is a, a simplified version of GCN and it works well and it also helpful for time efficiency. And second, since the user purchase behavior, sorry. And secondly, since user purchase behavior is often sparse, it is helpful to aggregate high order information to better model potential user interest. However, the ordinary graph convolution suffers from the well-known over smoothing problems. So it's like if we stack too many convolution layers, that the node features will be indistinguishable. So what we do is that 
we add an additional input of the initial products representations in each layer. And in such way that we always have the current uh, status of the products. And thus it can alleviate the problems of uh, the oversmoothing problem causing by the high order connectivities. And from our experiments, uh, we can tell that it really alleviates the oversmoothing effect and enable the utilizing high order relations on graph. And finally, we enrich product representations by applying efficient jumping graph convolutions on the successive behavior graph. And in this work, we take them as a showcase to demonstrate the effectiveness of SVG. It can also be potentially applied to any other product retrieval method that models users with their uh, purchase history for personalized product search. The, how we do that is uh, after obtaining the enriched product representations, we may substitute the original ordinary item representations with it. And uh, so this is uh, working, this can be worked like a plug-in plugging in methods. So this is our methods, our proposed approach, and we'll move to the experiment sections. Our approach is evaluated on eight different domains in the five core Amazon review dataset which is a benchmark that says for evaluating product search methods. Uh, and the setting of our experiment is like this. First, we sort all the sequences in a chronological order for each user and then for each of them. The last sequence where user is used as a test set and the second last sequence is used out, uh, as the validation set. We have report uh, some top K matrices, uh, matrices including hit rate, uh, MR, and NDCG to evaluate uh, the overall performance of the order list. The overall result is like this. As mentioned earlier, results reported of SVG is built on them. And here we can see that SVG can significantly improve over them in every tested. Uh, domain. And also, SVG achieves a significant improved over other baselines in nearly all cases, which demonstrate the effectiveness of our post approach. And we've also calculated the improvement percentage of NDCG at top 10 over them by the best baseline DREM and our uh, SVG. It can be seen that first, the performances of the REM and SVG are always consistent on all domain. That if uh, SVG works well, usually the REM, uh, the REM will also works well and vice versa. Uh, this probably indicates the effectiveness of these graph-based methods may be affected, uh, may be affected by the characteristics of different domains. And we have also conducted ablation study to explore the effect of graph convolutions. Uh, here, the blue, blue line is the performance of them, and uh, orange line is SVG without jumping connections. Uh, the green line is uh, SVG with jumping connections. And here, the x axis are, indicates the layers of graph convolutions, which also we call it as the order of the graph convolutions. So from the figure, we can observe that first, JSON can bring substantial performance gains over them. And second, effect of older graph uh, convolution is that as the L or order increases, the performance would drop due to the over smoothing effect. And third, uh, as L increases, we can see that the performance of SVG with jumping connection drops much slower than the uh, ones, uh, than the one without it. So it is saying that jumping connections can alleviate the oversmoothing effect. Mm. And, you uh, yes, I. this is the last page. And we also uh, evaluate the performance of SVG with uh, respect to, to different time scale. You can see that uh, usually a small time interval 
can perform better, but on small data set, uh, maybe a larger R is better because it could help a code products reach to broader neighborhood. And this is my, our work. Thanks for your attention. And uh, I'm here for questions. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the audience? Please unmute yourself and say something. I don't see anything in chat. Okay, then I actually have one. Uh, so this is very interesting work that you try to somehow combine language models and then the graph structure. Uh, so the first question is, um, you use GCNs on a predominantly or a pure bipartite graph, right? Um, do you think that you could actually choose a better uh, feature extraction mechanism, uh, which is specific for bipartite graphs, or do I get it wrong? This is a this user successive graph is a bipartite graph, right? Yes, it is a bipartite graph. So the do you think that GCNs are the best choice here? Uh, or do you think that you could actually use some other very specific applications of neural networks to bipartite graphs? Uh, actually, no. We apply, uh, when we take this bipartite graph uh, and apply the GCN on it, we actually, uh, in our implement, in implementation, it is more like a homogeneous graph. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by homogeneous graph? Uh, that is in our implementation, uh, when the JSON takes in the graph and propagate features, it doesn't really distinguish uh, two types of nodes. So there's no specific design for a bipartite graph. I see, okay. Thanks, thanks for the question. There's one more question okay. which I have, but I don't, Want to only be the person asking questions? Let me see if there's anybody else. Yeah. So uh, the the second question is uh, about this uh, this jumping feature, right? So how is it implemented? Do do you implement using gating between the original feature and the extracted features, or do you have a special way of uh, realizing that? Uh, this is actually like here that we inject the initial of the feature from the first layer to every uh, to every uh, okay. so it's like a smoothing mechanism. Okay. Uh, sorry. Got it. Got it. Yeah, this is clear. Uh, 